So we know now that profit maximization does occur where marginal re revenue equals marginal cost. So the additional revenue earned from the last unit produced is just equal to the additional cost. Um, before that unit, here we see the point on this graph here, before we get to that Q star unit, or excuse me, this is eight. <laughs> before we get to that eighth unit, the additional revenue earned on the previous seven units is bigger than the additional cost. So there's no reason to stop at producing one unit or four units or seven units. We want to keep going until we hit that eighth unit because our profits are growing as long as marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. When marginal revenue is less than marginal cost, here of course marginal revenue is still $3 and marginal cost has gone above $3. Now we're losing money on that unit, which means we've begun to shrink our profits. So there we go, there's our profit maximization. We wanna go one step further in this video to show the actual dollar amount of the profit um, in a graph. And then there's also the possibility that you're losing money. Um, and even in a situation where you're losing money, it might make sense for the firm to go ahead and produce because, as we'll explore in a later video, um, in the short run, when you are producing, you do have costs, excuse me, I should say, in the short run, as a firm, you do have costs even when you don't produce. That's what fixed costs are defined as. So you could technically shut down and you would still have to maybe pay your rent if you were on a contract or any other kind of contractual obligations. So even at a production quantity of zero, you have a cost. So when you compare how much I'm going to lose if I produce to how much I have to pay anyway, even if I don't produce, there are cases where you're going to want to produce even if you're losing money. Um, and so we'll explore that further, but today we just wanna focus just how do we show on a graph the profit or the loss. All right, so what we have so far then is the actual, um, the, uh, the actual quantity that we should be producing at if we're going to. So let's just focus first on this graph, the profit graph, and then we'll worry about this one here. So what are some of the things we see? We see that uh, as a profit, excuse me, as a profit taker, as a price taker, we have uh, the firm apparently having a market price of $3 coming across to them. So that's the price, their marginal revenue, and their firm demand curve. And here's their marginal cost. And what I'm trying to do with these two pictures is to try to have identical marginal costs. So it's like the same firm at two different points in time. And so we're going to start with the case where this firm is facing a market price of $3 and see um, what that means for them profit-wise, and then we'll see what happens if maybe the price fell to $2, how that would affect them. Okay, so the curve we want to look at is the average total cost curve because of the definition of average total cost is taking total cost and dividing it by the quantity. You're averaging, you're figuring out if it cost me $100 to make in total, to make 10 units, and on average, each unit cost me $10. If it cost me $1,000 to make 20 units, then on average, it must cost me $50 to make each unit. Okay, so if I know the average total cost, which I can read off the graph here, and let's just go ahead and say that at the quantity of eight, the average total cost is 250. All right. So if I know it's on average uh, 250, let's bring this down here. On a, so this point right here is $2.50. So on average, it costs me $2.50 to make eight units. So I know that this is $2.50 equals, I don't know the total cost, and there's the quantity, it would be eight. Okay, so if I bring the quantity, if I multiply this side to clear the quantity, I multiply both sides by the eight, then I have eight, do eight quantity, eight units times the average total cost of 250 is my total cost. All right, so I can use this definition of average total cost to actually show graphically what's happening here. So on the eighth unit, I'm making $3 in price minus the average cost of $2.50. I made a 50 cent profit on the eighth unit. But I also can say, because this is an average, that I made a 50 cent profit on every unit on average. So my uh, profit then would be this 
uh, 50 cents on that unit and on that unit and on that unit on that unit. So for every one of these eight units, I have made 50 cents. So the actual graphical area that represents profits is the difference between the price I'm being paid and the average total cost for the profit maximizing unit. The profit maximizing unit is where MR equals MC. And that is how I show the profit. So when the market price, the marginal revenue equals price, is above the average total cost at the quantity where MR equals MC, I'm making a profit. When it is below it, let's turn our attention to the loss side, I am going to be making a loss. So over here, MR equals MC at a lower quantity because the price itself is lower. So this um, entire marginal revenue curve has fallen to $2. So I'm going to be profit, profit maximizing at quantity 6. But if I'm not making a profit, I still care about MR equals MC because the best I can do now is to minimize my loss. So we talk about profit maximization slash loss minimization as the same thing. We hope you're making a profit, but the best you can do in either case, profit or loss, is where MR equals MC. So we have MR equals MC at six. We're gonna be making uh, $2 in price for that six unit, but on average, it cost me Okay, let's see, we could say it cost me $2.25. All right, so it's costing me $2.25 on average to make the sixth unit and the fifth unit and the fourth unit and the third unit. So on the sixth unit, if it costs me $2.25 on average and I'm getting paid $2, I lose a quarter on the sixth unit and the fifth unit and the fourth unit and the third unit. So again, we have this rectangular area. This time, it's showing the loss because the average total cost is higher than the price. And over on the left-hand side, the rectangular area is the profit. All right, so a real quick summary of how, about, how to go about showing the profit or loss on a graph. You can break it down into steps to try to make things a little easier. So step one is find the Q star, which is where MR equals MC, okay? Here is our marginal cost. Here is our marginal revenue. There's our magical point. So we're going to want to note that as Q star. Okay, so I know what quantity will be profit maximizing or loss minimizing. Um, because that's where the two are equal. That's where I, if I'm maximizing profit, that's, that's as good as I can do. And if I am making a loss, this is as small of a loss I can make. So you start with MR equal MC and, and you have your Q star. Um, next would be to find the price that you're going to be charging for that, um, which is pretty easy for um, perfect competition because marginal revenue equals price. Um, so find the P star. You might think it's sort of silly for me to mention this step, but believe me, when you see the future market structures, you'll be happy I at least mentioned it to you. And then three, find the average total cost at Q star. All right, so here's my Q star. I want to bring it up to the average total cost curve, and then that is the, um, the important cost part. So I can see that my price is here, my average total cost is here. Price greater than average total cost means uh, profit. So we're looking at a picture of a profit here. So I'm making this much profit on average per unit and I make that amount of profit on every unit I produce. So the entire rectangle here is my profit. And that is how you do it. And obviously you can try again yourself and do it where the average total cost curve is above the price. And you would go through the same steps. Uh, you find the Q star where the MR equals MC and you compare that P star at that Q star to the average total cost at that Q star. And that's how you do it.